Welcome to CG Market Watch. Today's topic, JP Morgan creates its own crypto coin. So once again, Crypto Gardens is an established channel that specializes in the education of trading and investing of digital assets. Whatever we discuss in our channel is just our personal opinion and should not be taken as financial advice. So let's begin. So first of all, we want to take a look at the coin market cap. What has changed? So right now when we're looking at coin market cap, the current market cap is at $120 billion. All right, BTC dominance is at 52.8%. And we can see that 24 hours volume has been at, um, hovering between 19 bill to 15 bill to 19 bill. So the interesting part that we need to take note here, number one, is in terms of ranking, Ethereum has finally overtaken Ripple again. Uh, and we see that Ethereum is currently ranked at number two and Ripple is ranked at number three. Okay. And uh, whereas for the rest of the tokens, we do still see some upside movement. For example, in Binance token, once again, it's something unique to cryptocurrency space. We do see um, pumps or we do see movements of tokens on random moments. All right. So even for NAM, it went up by 5.73%, even though they did mention that they have operational cost um, increase and they have problems managing their projects. All right. So the rest of the tokens, well, I think there isn't really much to say um, now as much. Uh, but I think the one thing that we want to take note and see and understand today is JP Morgan's bank. So in any case, JP Morgan is rolling out the first US bank um, backed cryptocurrency to transform payment businesses. So the whole idea here is this. Now, um, the one thing that we need to understand, first of all, is what is JPM coin for? All right. So once again, in this article, we mentioned that it's a digital token that will be used to instantly settle transactions between clients of its wholesale payment business. Um, they also mentioned below that JPM coin will be used to settle certain payment on the spot, right? So only a tiny fraction of payments will initially be transmitted using the cryptocurrency, but the trial represents the first real world use of a digital coin by a major US bank. Now, what is controversial here um, is that JP, it comes, it's coming from JP Morgan, all right? Why? Because JP Morgan's Jamie Dimon, which is the CEO, said that Bitcoin was a fraud. Now, back a few years ago, one or two years ago, when JB Dem when Jamie Dimon made the statement that Bitcoin was a fraud, uh, I don't know if you guys can remember, but cryptocurrency price, at least for Bitcoin, we did go through a little bit of tanking action. All right, we did tank by about three hundred to about five hundred dollars, if I remember correctly. So, so this is Jamie Dimon who has mentioned that Bitcoin is a fraud, coming out creating. Um, a US bank backed cryptocurrency called the JPM coin, all right, that will be used internally, all right. Now, the greatest question I have here is this. Now, what we have is a bigger circle. We have the whole cryptocurrency space, we have Bitcoin being decentralized, being unregulated, you know, circulating around the world, and you have this JPM coin that is kind of interacting with the ecosystem. How will JPM coin interact with BTC? Will it be paired against BTC? Will it be paired against US dollars? What will it be paired against? Now, will it then have an influence on BTC markets? Now, if let's say we were to go into a bull run and JPM coin is, for example, listed, for instance, listed on say Binance, okay? And uh, it's paired against BTC. Now, the greatest question now is, would you buy JPM? What is its use case, right? Is it really more for institutional traders? Is it more for retail investors? Is it more for um, clients, you know, who wants to transact within the bank itself to purchase JPM token, all right? So what exactly gives it its utility and the interaction with the space itself? So from what I can see as of now, um, JP Morgan, in a sense, is creating its own token so that it can be used internally, right, for certain transactions or settlements within the bank itself. Now, whether or not there will be interaction with, with the whole ecosystem or the whole cryptocurrency ecosystem, that is still questionable. And that is my main question of how or what impact does this JPM token has. As of now, I don't see much effect um, unless more banks start doing it or even governments create their own um, token, you know, to transact in a certain way, even if it's on a blockchain, is it interacting with what we have currently in the cryptocurrency space? Is it paired against BTC? Are they being traded, right? What is the utility value, right? Is there a certain um, value to it, right? What, what transactional um, properties does it have, right? How, how, who, how can we interact with it as a retail user? So there's so many questions here, but even with this token being created, it will not move the market, guys. It just means a trial test use within the bank, isolated, may not have any interaction with the current ecosystem. So this is it, right? It's a separate issue. 
Now, next thing uh, on the news today, we have why is it high time for millennials, crypto investors to go all in on Bitcoin? So um, Barry Silbert made a great statement. He said that, you know, almost every ICO was just an attempt to raise money, but there was no use case. The vast majority of what's out there will be eliminated. In a certain sense, this bearish period, it's kind of like a period to test ICO projects. Silbert, okay, who, is, who was worth more than 400 million at crypto height, okay? And in fact, right now, it's company Grayscale. Um, it's also investing into uh, BTC during the bear market, throughout the bear market. And the company now sold more than 1% of the entire BTC supply on behalf of shareholders. So in fact, they have this different trust, they have different funds. So the interesting part is, uh, the one thing that we didn't understand is when we define BTC as a digital goal, okay, and compared to gold, right? So, so digital goal and a real gold bar is so much difference. Now, Saying that a goal is an asset class for hedging out of risk uh, makes sense, right? If I, if I want to hedge out of inflation, if I want to hedge out of cash, I'll go into gold or buy gold and keep gold, and be in terms of CFDs or be in terms of a real gold bar. But the question is, if I were to buy into BTC and there's so much fluctuations on a daily basis, I cannot settle certain payments using it. Um, if I were to transact between from, I send a payment from here in Singapore to somewhere in Brazil, for instance, or Argentina, can I guarantee that the value will remain the same, right? So that is the greatest question in terms of use case for BTC. So to, in order for us to define it as Bitcoin as a digital goal, the prices will have to stabilize. It has to be more structured. Regulations have to kick in. Um, certain ways to regulate it have to come in. Governments have to approve it, have to classify it into a certain asset class. Then we may see the price starting to stabilize, all right? And you know, less things going on around the market and therefore stabilizing a price. And then we can define that as a digital goal where we can pack our funds in because we know that it's stable. See, that is my own definition of it. All right, so perhaps we'll take about three to five years for, or even 10 years for all of this to kick in. Then perhaps at a point in time, we can say that buying one Bitcoin is like owning a gold bar. All right, so I'll, I'll wait for that day to happen. And one last news to talk about. Um, there's one similarity among the best performing crypto during brutal 14 months bear period or bear market. So the one thing that's interesting is out of all the projects out there, the 2000 projects, um, this top 25 that this guy called Ryan Sekis, the founder of Misery, um, you know, he did a compilation of what are the top 25 cryptocurrencies that have been the most active in making um, not just games, right? Also in terms of data, in terms of coding, in terms of programming. So out of his data uh, he collated, there was this top 25 here. All right. So it's a pretty interesting article to kind of note. Um, this is tracking not in terms of changes, not in terms of hype, not in terms of anything, but the stats are just mainly purely kind of on programming. Um, it's on data collection. It's also on GitHub codes. All right. So this is one interesting thing that we can take note um, and, and some of the protocol improvements that are happening. All right. So you can take a look at this. This is pretty interesting. I feel some of the projects here. All right, so now moving on. Uh, finally, we are going to three charts today. We're going to be talking about the charts. Now, I'll be talking about BTC, Ethereum, and Litecoin. All right, so first of all, for BTC wise on a four hours chart. So, right now, what we're seeing here, uh, to me, it's more of a channel. All right, so some people say it's a, it's a bull flag, right? Potentially. Uh, yes, perhaps. Like when we see the huge uh, green candle here, almost like a Marubosu situation, we see a very strong long day candle. Um, it, it, basically, it's, it's forming the flat pole, right? And this is kind of like the flat. But if you were to look into up for the definition of a bull flag, uh, you realize that the definition of it is that the flag shouldn't be so long, right? Or the flag shouldn't be taking so long to form. There should be some continuation movement. So even when it comes to pattern and movement, there are a few kinds, which is continuation, reversal, um, and certain price action movement. All right, so bull flag formation is a continuation of, of a pattern, all right? So this is the flag pole, this is the flag. But personally to me, this is more like a channel, more like a wedge, all right? Um, and likelihood is that we have seen how it has balanced between the two, the channel itself. Uh, we are supported by the Kumo cloud, which, which seems to be a good sign. Um, in terms of RSI, we're picking up, um, OBV are picking up as well. So we may potentially see some upside movement in BTC over the weekends, um, fingers crossed. But we do see that support level is at 3557. This is on Bitstamp, by the way. Um, resistance level is at $3,600. And once again, another resistance is at 3622. Now, whether or not we will surpass the previous kind of high at 3650, that's still questionable, uh, or even 3700, you will at least have to break through the resistance at 36 and 3622 and even 3650 um, before we see a larger upside movement. 
Okay, but then again, question is what is pushing this movement of BTC, right? Nothing, no news, no nothing. It's just maybe a simple technical analysis. Okay, that, that may be the case. So looking at Ethereum wise, it's interesting. Uh, Ethereum has overtaken Ripple once again. And now at the same time, Ethereum's chart is very similar to how BTC moves, right? So we do see that we're kind of forming a triangle formation here. It's not really a symmetrical, symmetrical per se, but if you were to just adjust slightly, you may just see this symmetrical triangle going on. Uh, symmetrical triangle could mean either direction. Okay, it could go up, it could go down. Um, the good news, kind of, is that we're above the MA200 uh, and we are also above MA50. We are also above Kumo Cloud and uh, RSI OBP seems to be picking up as well. So I think this is kind of like a good sign, all right? Um, now, of course, anything can happen in crypto space. So I wouldn't give you guarantees, but I would say uh, Ethereum seems to have some upside coming up soon, all right? Now, talking about Litecoin, so you can see that these three uh, are some of the tokens that are most talked about, right, um, around the world, and uh, a lot of people are holding on to these three tokens. We do know that Litecoin uh, enjoyed a pretty good upside lately, all right, and then, but we do see like a head and shoulders formation, and therefore the dip happened. And right now, we have kind of like an inverse head and shoulder formation happening once again, and we are breaking out of the cloud. So chances are we may see some movement coming from Litecoin, uh, which may indicate uh, BTC movement later on, right? So odds like um, Litecoin and Ethereum are a pretty good indicator to tell you whether or not um, BTC may be moving later on, all right? So when you coincide all three charts together, um, we are all well above on four hours at least. So in that sense, uh, when you compare these three charts together, Litecoin seems to enjoy a greater upside. It has more potential in terms of prices, in terms of price action as well. Um, so these are the conclusion that I can draw from the three different charts that I'm showing and sharing with all of you. All right, um, so that's all the time I have with you guys today. Um, thank you all for tuning in to CG Market Watch. And once again, CG Elite is now open. Um, so check out the links below. Uh, if you have any questions, do you know just send us an email, drop us an email, let us know. Um, and our team is always here to support you. Check out our Telegram group as well. You know, if you have any questions, reach out to us there. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in. Safe investing, and I'll see you next week. If you want to stay updated with the latest blockchain and cryptocurrency news, consider subscribing to our channel and don't forget to click on the notification bell. We'll see you in the next episode.